Welcome to r slash pro revenge where revenge is sweet. So after a year long battle, this finally came to a close. Maybe not my revenge, but revenge on my behalf. A little backstory. I bought a house about five years ago and in three years it flooded three times. It never flooded in the 40 years before. Thanks climate change. Finally, after the third flood, my wife and I were financially able to move out and sell the house for a loss. We searched around and found our dream house, or so we thought. After living in the new house for about six months, we noticed something very peculiar. Whenever it would rain hard, the bathtub would backfill with sewage and the toilets wouldn't flush. So we called a plumber. The plumbers were awesome and told us that our sewer lines had broken between the house and the city sewer line. And while we could try a spot fix, we would probably need to repair the entire line. Ouch. Having just dumped a bunch of cash on a new house and taking a loss on the old house, we said to try and keep it as cheap as possible. They dug up where the line was broken. Broken is an understatement. The line had all but dissolved. We were going to have to replace the whole line, about 5,000 bucks. Not the best time, but okay, let's do it. Once they exposed the line the best they could, I got a call from the plumbers. The line has broken up so badly, they can't find where the residential line ties into our city line or tap. Now, the homeowner is responsible for the residential line, but the city is responsible for the tap in the main line. I asked the plumber what's needed. He says we need to get the city plans and dig to uncover the tap. More digging equals more money. At this point, it's been two weeks and I just want to take a dump in my own house and take a shower. Okay, dig the hole. They dig a 4x4x10 four by four by hole and find nothing. We double check the city's plans and they're right on where the plans say the tap is. Now we have to deal with the city. We call 311 as directed and after sitting on hold for three hours, a city official sends us the same plans with the location where we dug. We call back and say we already dug there and there is no tap. Getting nowhere with the city, my wife finally goes down to City Hall and after spending a vacation day, hanging around waiting for someone, she finally gets in to meet with an official. Let's call him Richard. Richard prints off the same plans we've already been given and says we need to dig where it's marked. My wife takes out her phone and says, look, it's not there. At this point, he mutters to himself and takes out a pen and draws on the plans, marking the actual location. It shows the residential line doglegging from the original drawings and is about 10 feet west of the initial location. It was apparent that he doesn't want to waste his valuable cushy government job time on my wife. It was pretty obvious he just made something up to get her out of his office. Plumbers come out, dig a second 4x4x10 four by four by hole, read more money, and surprise surprise the tap isn't there either. Fun. Back to City Hall and another vacation day wasted waiting for Richard. At this point, we don't want another hand-drawn map. Someone from the city needs to come out and mark where the dang tap is. They come out and I burn a vacation day to wait around for them. To their credit, they got down in the sewer, did some digging around, and mark a new spot between the two big holes. Finally, a real location. Plumbers come out and dig a third hole. And if you think they actually found the tap, then you'd be mistaken. At this point, the entire backyard is destroyed. Piles of dirt everywhere, the lawn is dead, the trees are dead, it's ruined. Our beautiful new house's backyard is literally sh Back down to Richard's office, another vacation day burned and we are livid. We remain calm, but insist that we must have not been tied to the city's main line. There was no tap. Now, you might be thinking, how did we not know? Six months of sewage just piled up in our backyard? In the backyard, there's a large dirt mound that's been turned into a nicely landscaped forest. You can see it in the backyard picture. Lots of room to absorb the sewage that only two people would produce. But if it rained hard, the dirt was saturated and would backfill the bathtub and the toilet wouldn't flush. Richard doesn't accept responsibility, but does send out the contractor who did all the works for taps in my area. The contractor comes out and I get the full story. Two years prior, while the previous owner was doing improvements and not living in the house, the main line of the sewer was replaced. Basically, they slide the new tubing into the old tubing underground and go in and install the new taps for each house. Since no one was living in the house, they couldn't get into the backyard and told the city they didn't service our house. I'm furious! 
It's been three months, over $20,000, and all the wasted time and vacation just because Richard was too lazy to do his job and make one call to the contractor to sort it out. Now, remember how my first house flooded three times? I learned my lesson dealing with people, and once we knew we had to talk to the city, we recorded everything. Every phone call, every email, I videoed the contractor and his explanation, everything, and all obtained legally. In my state, you have to have both parties' consent to be recorded. He installs a tap, and I take the first shower at my house in three months. I'm ready to act. I go down once again to Richard's office. I show him everything and want to file a claim. I agree to cover the cost of the residential line as that's my responsibility. However, I want the city to reimburse the cost to dig the unnecessary holes. I think I have a good case. Pursuant to our city, we had to file a claim before starting any work and provide three estimates in writing to file a claim. Since none of that was done and couldn't be done after the fact, Richard denied the claim right there. Left without words, I walk away completely defeated. I perk up on the way home after calling my wife and being reminded that I have some lawyer friends. Surely one of them could help or know someone who can. Unbeknownst to me, my state has something called sovereign immunity. Basically, you can try and sue the city or state, but it'll be thrown out immediately, and Richard knows this. No credible lawyer will help me pursue this case because they know I would just be wasting my money. I'm pretty much out of luck. After months of calling around to try and find anyone to help, I've resigned myself to defeat. Almost a year goes by. The loans I took out are about to start coming due and I have no idea how I'm going to pay for it. All communication with Richard and his office is blocked. I've also tried his boss and crickets. I tried going back down there, but Richard refused to meet with me. I finally reach out to my council member in a last ditch effort. I include a synopsis along with all the evidence I have. I didn't expect much. One hour after hitting send, my phone rings. It's my council member and she's livid about how we were treated. She has a meeting scheduled with the head of public works for later that week. She doesn't promise anything, but says she's going to fight for me until they kick her out of the building. After the meeting, she calls me on her way back to the office. The head of public works has accepted full responsibility. She wants receipts for everything. The plumber, pay stub showing the vacation we took, phone logs from time we spent on hold, the quote from the landscaper to fix the backyard, all of it. She has them all in her inbox by the time she makes it back to her office. That was about three weeks ago. Yesterday, I met with a council member at her office. Thank you so much. My wife and I can't repay you for all you've done. It was my pleasure. We chit chat for a bit. Here's a check for what you're owed. This is so great. We can pay off the loan and finally get someone to fix our... Wait, this is much more than we need. You forgot to include emotional distress. I added it in for you. She winks at me. Oh, and if you ever have any issues, you won't have to worry about dealing with Richard. He no longer works here. Just come to me. I've become good friends with the head of public works. Oh my god, you're literally the best person I know. If there's anything I can do. Elections are in the fall. Maybe you could turn out and vote? So I went home, paid off everything, and the landscapers are coming out next week. Oh, and I'm volunteering for her re-election campaign. So, on the surface, it probably seems like this council lady helped out OP out of the goodness of her heart. But I've read enough pro-revenge stories to know what's really going on here. I would bet anything that Richard has been pissing off this councilwoman for years. And OP finally gave her the ammunition she needed to take him down. This wasn't OP getting pro-revenge. This was the council lady getting pro-revenge against the co-workers she despised. Our next Reddit post is from Bagels for Life. Backstory. Growing up, my father was an emotionally abusive piece of garbage who got off on religious authority and controlling every aspect of our lives. We were kept so isolated and made to fear the police and child protective services to the point where we thought it was normal. After I went off to college, my little brother came out as gay and my father started beating him, unbeknownst to my mother and I. When my brother threatened to tell my mom about this, my father kicked the then 15-year-old out of the house. My mother was understandably horrified by this and tried to get my father to see sense, at which point he started hitting her. 
Long story somewhat short, I got my mom out. My brother went to live with his friends and divorce proceedings were started. It was nasty. No one wanted to go to the police. Father was friends with the local small town cops. And thankfully, my douchebag sperm donor agreed to a no-fault divorce. While my mom was cleaning out her stuff from the house under the watchful eye of her amazing co-workers, she found my father's discharge papers. This is where the plan started. You see, my father spent his entire 25-year marriage telling everyone that he was a Special Forces vet who had been awarded a Purple Heart and Bronze Star, which were coincidentally destroyed in a house fire along with all his uniforms and paperwork. But here were his discharge papers, and they clearly stated he was given an other-than-honorable discharge after four years in the motor pool. Not wanting to be seen as the vindictive ex-wife, my mom quietly took the papers and didn't tell anyone for years after my father moved away to a new state to join a militia. When she finally told me while tipsy this past year, we hatched a plan. Over the next few months, we snooped on social media to make a list of his former and current employers, family, major friends that we knew of, and his new church. She enlisted our extended family and my college friends from all over the country. In November, we each purchased Veterans Day cards and wrote out messages such as Stolen Valor, Motor Pool, Pretender, etc. Everyone attached a photocopy of the page listing his discharge. And then we sent them on the same day from the nearest major cities with a return address listed as his current church. They arrived on or around Veterans Day from Atlanta, Orlando, Washington, D.C., New York, St. Louis, Kansas City, Seattle, Portland, L.A., Houston, Ontario, London, and Edinburgh. Immediately, my mother was inundated with calls and emails from people who had no idea and couldn't believe he would lie like that, and were sorry for not believing her and my brother. My idiot dad sent a nasty email implying horrible things if he could ever prove my mother did this, which she forwarded straight to her lawyer along with the nasty letters from his more vocal supporters. Now, most people in our hometown look at her as the battered spouse who walked away with her head held high rather than that tramp who divorced such a godly man. My little brother has no idea we did this. He didn't want anyone to confront my father, but later told me he got a random call from our pastor apologizing for kicking him out of the church over my father's lies. And I can finally sleep well at night with the knowledge that his reputation is in shambles by our hands. Revenge truly is a dish best served cold. Great revenge, OP, but you forgot one thing. You really should have sent a letter to your dad's local veterans group. I'm sure they would want to have a word with your father about stolen valor. Our next Reddit post is from Salty Balls 2020 What's better than calling your cops on your sweet little old neighbor's heroin addict grandson for stealing your Amazon package? In July, my elderly neighbor had her grandson and pregnant girlfriend move in to help them out. She's a widowed lady in her 70s, babbles a lot, but sweet. I have a soft spot for her. Years ago, she cornered me as I was leaving to take my dog on a walk. My dog was unhappily pacing waiting for the walk while we listened to her stories. He peed on her during the story. She's so senile she didn't notice. Just a few days later, I'm mowing my backyard and the grandson walks past my house carrying an Amazon envelope. Weird. An hour later, a sweet little old lady comes over with the envelope her grandson had. This was in my landscaping. I totally forgot I ordered my kids the movie Leap. What a terrible haul for the grandson. See, I'm a criminal defense attorney, probably the only one this lady knows. If I call the cops, my neighbor will try to hire me. It'll get weird. She's so sweet. I'll be a witness. He's on probation, so he'll sit in jail for a while. This will totally make me look like a snitch to my own clients in that same jail who are thieves, addicts, and burglars. It's bad personally and professionally, and it's not the biggest deal. So I filled up an Amazon box with purple rain powder that was ordered to my office. A dry dye that gets darker and spreads when it comes into contact with your sweat. That lasts a week on your skin. Think leaking pen times 50. Why? I want to shame him and it won't come back on me. He's not going to call the cops on me for stealing my stuff. He isn't going to tell his grandma he stole from me. And if it makes a mess in her house, it's still cheaper for her than hiring a lawyer and paying her grandson's court costs and fines. Yep, package was gone in 20 minutes. 
I walk past the home. Screams of anger from the pregnant girlfriend. This stuff won't come off. It's all over my grandma's house. Priceless. The following day, I give him the head nod as he smokes a cigarette and a hoodie in July. He runs inside. Then, I taught my kids to yell smurf when we walk past. No snitching, just shame. Our next Reddit post is from Casino Dom. For background, I work in a very competitive part of the service industry. It's a large enough community, but at the same time, it's small enough where someone somewhere in the industry knows you, so it's important to not burn bridges as one day you might find yourself in a disadvantageous position. I was in my position for a good three years as middle management. No call outs, never late, always stayed after to help my team out, worked on projects that belonged to my bosses, etc. Except for one day where I had gotten into a car accident. I was working the night shift and it was raining, this is important later in the story, and was unable to go into work as my car was undrivable and I had to wait for a tow truck and insurance and trying to find a ride late at night and early morning was very difficult. At the time, my director had been let go and there was a bloodbath pissing contest to see who would get his promotion. For hierarchy purposes, it's my director, my direct bosses all on the same level of authority, three of them, then me. One of the direct bosses, let's call him Dick, decided he was getting the promotion and started shaking our department, restructuring projects, changing people's shifts, taking credit for other people's work, he was a real pain. About a few weeks of this, he had decided to switch me from morning shifts, which I had gotten due to my seniority on the team, into night shifts. I didn't make a stink because we were very shorthanded, also important, and the team needed help as we had newer members who had children, and I understood how this could affect their life. Fast forward a few more weeks and I get into the car accident which made me call out. This didn't sit well with him as I'd made the team suffer because of my irresponsibility. Lol. What? I didn't think much of it since I knew it was stressful and people tend to say things they don't mean under stress. Soon after that, I met some higher ups from another department. They offered me a job in a new venture the business was exploring. I was a good candidate because of my experience and work traits. Of course, I agreed as this would be a promotion in position and salary. Plus, my network of contacts would put me in a position to grow even further. I went through a series of interviews, three in total, and I was given the opportunity to take the position. I signed my paperwork and shook the hand. A couple of days later, HR called me saying the position was rescinded and that it shouldn't come as a surprise. I was shocked and asked for a meeting to understand the decision. Cue the day of the meeting. I walked in and HR is sitting in the meeting room with Dick. After the cordialities, Dick explains that he blocked my promotion because I had attendance issues, which I had one call out due to my accident. And HR chimed in saying this shouldn't deter me from applying again in six months. Lol, okay. I accepted defeat because I still needed my job and I didn't want to paint a target on my back. A couple of days later, a friend of mine that worked close to Dick had told me Dick had made the comment that he didn't want to let me go because I would leave the night shift uncovered, and no one would easily accept that shift. I was furious, but decided to not act on it, as I explained earlier, it's a small enough business. A few months later, a competitor opened up nearby, and a few of us left to go work there. I was one of them. I was hired by an amazing boss who I'm still friends with years after. He offered me a great position and a huge raise in salary. For hierarchy purposes, it was my boss, then me and my counterpart, then our assistants. I'd heard through the grapevine that Dick had gotten rejected from the director position and was leaving the company. About a week or so later, I was looking at new hires with my boss to fill out my counterpart position. My boss calls me and says, Hey look, this guy comes from the company you came from. To my delight, I saw Dick's name. I had been hiring people to the assistant position from the previous company, so I guess Dick thought he was next. I told my boss the story about Dick and how he blocked my promotion. All my boss said was thank you, but no thank you. We didn't even give him an interview. Looking back at it, we should have given him the interview and just said no. It would have made it sweeter. Like I said before, don't burn bridges if your industry is small. OP, you didn't burn that bridge, your douchebag boss burnt that bridge. So yeah, I agree, you absolutely should have invited him to an interview. The look on his face when he saw you sitting across the table with a big smile on your face would have been well worth it. That was r slash pro revenge and if you like this video then let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow.